Good evening. evening. Welcome to worship here at St. Paul's on this uh, beautiful fall weekend as the leaves start to to change colors and the weather stays nice and warm for now, though we know winter (laughs) is coming. A few brief announcements before uh, we begin worship this evening. The first is, uh, as of Wednesday, the guidelines for St. Louis County have changed as far as capacity limitations and gathering limitations. So the details are in your good news, but the key thing to remember is that starting next weekend, the weekend of the 17th and the 18th, uh, capacity in the sanctuary will go back up to 150. Uh, we, that is actually below our 50% capacity, but we will, as an added measure of safety, open up the back windows and have two uh, rows of chairs also in the narthex um, if people want to sit there as well. Uh, the s- things that are staying the same are the mask, uh, distancing among different households, uh, and those things we've become accustomed to. But the other big change is that because we can go back up to 150, we will... Uh, go back to our normal worship times on Sunday morning. Now, Saturday night is not affected by that, but in case next weekend you're planning on coming on a, uh, a Sunday, those worship times will be 8, 9.30, and 10.45 here in the sanctuary, and Livingstone in the gymnasium will be at 10.45 as well. So again, the details of that are in your good news. It's the top item there, but the key thing to remember for next weekend, if you're planning to come to the 11 o'clock service, it will be at 10.45 as it normally would be uh, prior to the pandemic. Then the second announcement is uh, really as we continue into uh, this year and as we continue into this pandemic, I know one of the things that uh, becomes tougher, especially for those who are not able to worship in person with us yet, is remembering the tithes and the offerings. So we just wanted to make a brief announcement that we do have online a giving for those interested, and we will continue to have the plates on the side by the transepts for when you uh, are exiting as well. With that, let us stand and begin worship. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Glorious is God with his angels and saints. This is God with his angels and saints. You may be seated. We read Psalm 118 
responsively. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I might enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Save us, we pray, O Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. 
and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. O Lord, have mercy on us. The epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. O Lord, have mercy on us. We rise to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Joy, peace, and strength. If I had to ask you to give me some words to describe what your life has been like the last few months or even across 2020, I'm sure joy, peace, and strength may not have been at the tip of your tongue. One could hardly blame someone for not thinking these words are an accurate depiction of our lives today. After all, what brought us joy, what brought joy to so many people, things like gathering together, playing sports, even going to school, even coming here to worship, or just being able to see people face to face instead of mask to mask, has seemingly been thrown upon us. And peace. Peace doesn't necessarily seem like the most accurate depiction of our lives right now. Peace when there's so much strife and even disagreement or hostility, even amongst families, about what to do with this pandemic. And if you've watched any of the debates, they've been anything but peaceful. And when you think of the economic uncertainties and the civil and social unrest and injustice, that we have seen happen this summer, peace can seem like an unattainable, far-fetched idiom of a platitude that is no longer attainable. And then there's strength. Maybe at the start of this year, at the start of 2020, you thought you were doing all right with strength. But as the pandemic continues to wreak havoc on our lives, as the physical, mental, emotional, and even spiritual toll it's cast upon us continues. Perhaps you look back at that strength you thought you had at the start of 2020, and it almost seems laughable now in comparison. No, if you were to come up with a campaign slogan for the year 2020, I don't think joy, peace, and strength would be at the top of many people's list. Yet the word of God in Philippians chapter 4 reminds us that those very things, joy, peace, and strength, that's what your life is. Yes, even in 2020, even in the midst of a pandemic or the coronavirus, you have in your life joy, peace, and strength. Paul begins our epistle reading by saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, Rejoice. Not rejoice that everything's going to plan in your life. Not rejoice because you have no problems or nothing to be concerned about. Not rejoice because things are turning out exactly how you want them to be. No, even in the midst of trials and uncertainty, we are called to have joy in the Lord. That knowing God means knowing joy. That knowing God, knowing what he's done for you in Christ Jesus gives us that appropriate response to rejoice in him always. And as Paul continues in Philippians chapter 4, we read that Christians need not be anxious about anything, but in everything, with prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Be anxious about nothing? How could we not be anxious about the future of our country or our communities? How could we not have worry or concern for our own health? How could we not have anxiety, especially when it seems like this year, 2020, is nothing but an unending unending stream of life-altering surprises in store for us? could even say it doesn't seem to make much sense to say you don't have to be anxious about anything right now. And that's okay. Because Paul continues that you make your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Again, not the peace of God that makes complete sense to us Not the peace of God which is clearly evident to all. Not the peace of God which simply makes your problems disappear like that. 
but rather the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. The peace of God which goes beyond all human wisdom or rationale, that is yours in knowing who God is and what he's done for you. A peace that truly surpasses understanding that comes to you by God's grace and his mercy. Peace that comes from knowing that God loved you enough to send his son to die for you. And then there is strength. As we get to the end of our epistle reading for today, we read Paul say, Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So often when we see that verse, it's just that last line. I can do all things who, through him who strengthens me. Athletes put it on their wrist tape or even on their eye black. You might see it on a coffee mug or a refrigerator, verse, or a refrigerator magnet. And yet, if you listen to what Paul says, he's in the midst of one of life's valleys, you could say, for him. He's actually in prison when he writes this letter. And he's not relying on his own physical strength. He's not relying on his own economic certainty or his social status. Rather, he's relying on the strength of Christ, on the strength of God. See, it is true that for some, perhaps those words, joy, peace, and strength, don't do an accurate depiction of what their life is like in 2020. And perhaps even at times for us, those words have seemed to be like a forgotten phrase from a pre-COVID, pre-pandemic era. Yet God's word reminds us that joy, peace, and strength is an incredibly accurate depiction. They're accurate attributes of what your life is in Christ. That they are a great reminder of what our true joy is. Our true peace and happiness is all about. Where we go for our source of strength. That our joy is in Christ. Not in ourselves, not in our ability to figure out what comes next in the future, but our joy is in the God who would redeem us. And our peace is based not on our own conceived notion of peace, but rather it's based on God's work and it goes beyond all human understanding. That knowing Christ, knowing what God has done for you, means you don't have to worry like everyone else does. Not that we are immune from worry, not that our problems just instantly go away, but we don't worry like others have to. We are called to never forget that we can bring our request to God and his peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, will guide us, will guide our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. An important reminder when so many of us during this time have faced physical hardships, health scares, mental anguish, and even spiritual battles at what we're experiencing. And these words from Philippians 4 are a great reminder that our strength, our strength is only in the Lord, not in our physical ability to be strong enough to persevere, not in the stability of our economic resources or our social standing, but we have strength in him who does not falter. Strength in the one who would defeat sin, death, and the devil on our behalf. It's a reminder that truly being a Christian means these three words are a part of our daily life. Strength, peace, and joy. And in that, we're able to echo the words of the psalmist. That I thank you, God, that you have answered me and have become my salvation, as we read earlier. But most importantly, we remember that even today and each day of 2020, 
no matter who wins the election, no matter what happens with the coronavirus, we can go forward with a strength, a joy, and a peace in Christ that can lead us to say those very familiar words that today, this year, and even right now, this Saturday, is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Now may that true peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise for prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you invite us to trust in you for our salvation. Deal with us not in the severity of your judgment, but in the greatness of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In addition to the prayer request listed in the bulletin, we pray for Nevin Shively, who has surgery this this Tuesday. We give thanksgiving for the 44 years of marriage granted to Al and Joan Kepke, and we pray for the family and friends who mourn the death of Bill Meisch. Almighty God, it is only through you that we can have joy, peace, and strength in the midst of life's struggles. Keep us mindful of these things in times of hurt and hardship, and let us never begrudge the generous gifts and blessings you freely offer to us and to all people. Lord, in your mercy, gracious Father, bless all those who have been given the gift of marriage. Especially this day, Lord, we give you thanks for the marriage you have blessed Sam Verhoff and his wife Kyle with, married today, and for the 28 years of marriage that you have granted to Martin and Peggy Hager and for the 44 years of marriage that you have granted to Al and Joan Kepke. Grant that they and all married couples would have a continued devotion to you and Christ-like love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, God of all goodness, lift up the church, her leaders, pastors, and missionaries across the world, including our mission of the month, Dr. Hargawin Kinde who is working to develop Christian higher education in Ethiopia. Lord, in your mercy, loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of all those in our medical communities at this time, that your wisdom and guidance would be with them in all they do. Hear our prayers on behalf of the sick, the injured, and the hurting. Grant them healing in accord with your will and grace to sustain them in their need. Hear us especially for Nevin, and for all those we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of life, bless all who grieve. Give them your hope, your peace, and your comfort. Especially this day, all who grieve the death of Bill Meish. Give comfort and peace to his family and friends as they hold fast to the promise of Bill's eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of peace, be with our nation. Grant all those who are in positions of governance a wisdom and guidance according to your will, that your church would serve the many people across this country that are hurting, and that we would be a beacon of Christ's love and kindness for all people. Lord, in your mercy, almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may not be bound but have free course to be preached with the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, 
that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide until the end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.